scapula is a flat bone located in the thoracic region of mammals and lies against the craniodorsal part of the thoracic wall. In domestic mammals, it associates with the trunk muscles, but does not form a true articulation. It has a triangular shape with two surfaces, three edges and three angles, and the longitudinal axis located obliquely. Its ventral angle articulates with the humerus. We will describe the scapula of an equine. The borders of the scapula form a triangular shape. The dorsal border in equines, as in other ungulates, is extended by the cartilage of the scapula, a structure that serves to increase the area for muscle insertions. This cartilage calcifies and becomes more rigid as the animal ages. The cranial border is usually thin and sinuous and distally forms the scapular notch. The caudal border may be rectilinear or slightly concave. On the lateral side, the spine of the scapula is present, which extends from the dorsal border to the neck of the bone. In it, the trapezius muscle is inserted. Halfway down the spine is the tuberosity of the spine, more prominent in equines than in other species. The distal part of the spine in which the deltoid muscle originates progressively decreases in size. The spine divides the lateral surface of the scapula into two unequal surfaces. The one that is situated craniodorsally is the supraspinous fossa, and the one of the chordoventral position is the infraspinous fossa, which is greater in size. The former is occupied by the supraspinous muscle, and the latter by the infraspinous muscle. The costal surface is medial and largely comprised of the subscapular fossa, which is occupied by the muscle of the same name. In the dorsal part of this surface, there are two rough areas, the fascia serrata or serrate surfaces. On these surfaces, ventral serrate muscles are inserted. Of the three angles of the scapula, it is the ventral one that presents anatomical details of greater interest. This angle, which attach to the rest of the bone by the neck of the scapula, contains the glenoid cavity a more or less oval surface which articulates with the head of the humerus. The glenoid notch is located in its cranial portion. Dorsally to the cavity is the supraglenoid tubercle, where the tendon of the origin of the bicep brachii muscle joins, and the caracoid process where the small caracobrachial muscle originates. The scapula of ruminants has an even more defined triangular shape to that of horses. It is wider in its dorsal part and narrower in its ventral end. The spine of the scapula of ruminants is proportionally more prominent and sinuous, and in its distal part it ends in a well-defined prominence, the acromion. The difference in size between the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa is also greater than in equines. In ruminants, the infraspinous fossa is approximately three times wider than the supraspinous fossa. The shape of the glenoid cavity is more rounded and does not have a notch, and the tubers and apophysis are in general less developed than in horses. The scapula of carnivores is generally longer and narrower, and its shape is less triangular than in other domestic species. You can see how the cranial edge is convex, which gives the bone a shape that resembles the letter D. The spine of the scapula is tall and thin without marked tuberosity. It ends in the acromion, which presents a ventral prominence, the hamate process. The spine divides the lateral face into two fosses, whose size difference is not as great in these species as in ungulates. On the other hand, on the costal side, the fascia serrata also have a somewhat peculiar shape, square on the cranial part and elongated on the caudal part.